All right, I'm on steps 81 of Free Code Camp's new responsive web designs. Third course, learn CSS colors by building a set of colored markers. So if you can see our border right here that we set in step 80, its color is black. And that's black is the default color if we don't set any color um, explicitly. But we'd like to set it explicitly just to make sure our code is a little bit more readable. So we'll just do border, left, and then so we've done width, style, and now we're going to do color. And we're just going to say black. And nothing's going to change, but it just makes everything a little bit more clear. Now, we actually have some shorthand to make um, setting the width, style, and color of the border left or border right, border top, border bottom. We can just replace this word right here, these words right here. Um, but we, if we just say border left, we can just set the width to 10 pixels. And then if we do a space, then we set the style, which we'll do solid here. And then we'll do the color and we'll say black, which means we can just delete all of this. And we're left with the exact same thing but in two fewer lines of code. Now we actually want to make our, um, the border right here look a little bit more realistic. So if we set that to, oh, not that actually, from solid to double, we have two lines right there. And that looks a little bit more like a marker you might find at the store, which is what we're going for. Okay, and now we can actually, we don't want it um, to be completely black and opaque not be able to see the red color coming from underneath. So we're going to use RGB again. So we're going to say RGBA. And we're going to set everything to black and then set that 75% opacity, opacity, however it's said. So if we remember, black is the absence, absence of any color. So we'll just set all three values of RGB um, to zero. And then we want to set that opacity or opacity to 75%. So 0.75 because the max value is one. So it's just divided by, let's say you want 75%, then you just do 75 divided by 100, and that gives us 0.75. And so our marker is a little bit um, more transparent, but not completely transparent. So we really like this new design. It looks a lot more like a marker. We have this cap at the top, then we have some sleeve that maybe will say what color we have, and then we have that um, whatever it is on the bottom. So we just want to add these to everything else. And so all I'm going to do is just copy and paste. That's a, a lot of coding is just copy and paste. You did... Um, of something you did before, and then you're going to add it somewhere else. But let's make sure as we copy and paste that we're um, fixing up indentation to make sure um, everything is consistent and our code is readable, our HTML is readable. So now we're actually um, going to set a, sh a shadow. We can set um, a shadow to make these markers really pop off the page and maybe look a little more 3D. So the way we'll do this is we're going to set the box shadow um, property. And then we can set the offset on the x-axis, so left and right. And then positive is to the right, negative is to the left. And then offset y, up and down. So positive is y, and negative is down. It's just like a coordinate plane from math. So we're going to set our, um, our back box shadow to be 5 pixels to the right. And we want it to be 5 pixels up. And then we want it to be red. So as you can see, it already showed up, but we don't. that default color is black, but we actually want it to be red. So we'll just say red like that. And there we go. We have a little bit of a shadow, not super realistic, but we're going to make it better in the next few steps. Um, and so maybe we don't want it on the right, as I mentioned earlier, uh, doing negative, we'll uh, move it the opposite direction. So positive five pixels moved it five pixels to the right. And if we do negative five pixels, it'll move it five pixels to the left. And we can do the same for up and down. So instead of um, actually, sorry, by default, it goes um, five pixels will go down. So in the negative y direction on a coordinate plane, um, and then negative will go up. That's a little bit backwards, so I apologize. It's not exactly like a coordinate plane. That's something that you can just kind of test and you'll figure out, oh, was my assumption correct or was it wrong? So now we're gonna add a, back, uh, a box shadow to um, green, but we're actually gonna um, learn about the blur radius property, um, or value actually. Um, and so um, a, a radius like a circle, um, so right here, the default radius is zero, so there's no um, curved edges here. But if we if we set that to five pixels here, we'll see there's a little bit of a different result. So we're going to go five pixels to the right, five pixels down, and five pixels radius, and then we're going to set green as the color. And as you can see, instead of being these sharp edges here, we actually have this nice um, 
it, it kind of looks like um, maybe some sort of light. Um, it looks definitely a lot more realistic, more like a real shadow. And that's what we're going for. And so the final value that we can add, um, we're going to learn about to add about in the box shadow is the spread radius. And so um, by default, it's zero, um, but we're going to add a, a spread radius to make sure that the, the shadow moves all around five pixels in all directions. So we're going to go box dash shadow colon space and then we don't want any offset x no offset y but we do want a blur radius of five pixels um or actually we want zero for blur radius and five pixels for the spread radius and then we want it to be blue in color and so we can see oh look at that that spread radius spread five pixels in every single direction if we remove it we actually have nothing because it's um there's no radius so it's just taking up the same space as the blue marker but now that we added that five pixels it's going everywhere and for this last step we're going to make that red um the red shadow look a little more realistic by setting the offset to, uh, um, to zero in all directions because our light source maybe we're going to anticipate it's coming from the um, viewer's eyes right to the screen and so that shadow is going to be a little bit different so we don't want any offset x no offset y but we will add a, a blur radius of 20 pixels and a spread radius of zero, and there we go. It really pops off the page. Let's see if it'll accept uh, what we wrote if we don't include a spread radius because we know that is gonna be by default zero. Okay, so it actually doesn't accept it even though it is technically correct. I just wanted to test that out. And there we go.